Back in the 60s, real-life alien hunter Frank Drake actually came up with a formula for estimating how many advanced civilizations might be out there. If you like to play the Drake equation game, you can now put it for the fraction of planets. Fractions of stars that have habitable planets is probably close to 100 stars. That might mean that there are several times a free hundred billion planets. So what is this famous Drake equation? Well, it's a way of estimating the number of civilizations in the galaxy at the moment that we could potentially communicate with. They call it N. So it equals, for a start, the rate at which stars form in the galaxy, times the fraction of those stars that actually have planets. Now, not just any planet, of course, we also want to know the number of those planets that could potentially have life on them. But of course, we're not just looking for any old life, we need intelligent life. So the fraction of those planets that have intelligent life is the next term. But even intelligent life is not good enough for us because whales are intelligent, but they can't build radio telescopes. We'd never be able to communicate with whales on another planet. So you need the fraction of those planets that have communicating intelligent creatures. And finally, the last term is a very difficult one to predict, L the length of time a civilization lasts for. Do they go extinct after 100 years, 1,000 years, a million years? Multiply all those numbers together and you get an estimate for how many civilizations could be out there in the galaxy. That would tell you that 100 million stars, 100 million solar systems, probably just in our galaxy alone. They have oceans. Almost 100 billion such per planet. Trouble is, a lot of Drake's numbers are unknown. But excitingly, we've recently zeroed in on one. The fraction of stars that have planets brings us one vital step closer to calculating ET's existence. The answer came from the launch of a very different space telescope back in 2009. Lift off of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets suddenly like our own. The Kepler had just one goal, to discover other solar systems. It was painstaking work. Kepler just stared, year after year, at a single patch of sky. Looking for minuscule changes in the light from about 200,000 stars. Incredibly, from those minute variations, Kepler could reveal which stars had planetary systems and what those systems were like. They're named exoplanets. And some are so unusual, they're rewriting the textbooks. There are puffy planets, extremely large, but not very dense, and water worlds, where there's no land surface, just a never-ending ocean. And one star, TRAPPIST-1, has seven Earth-like planets. The discoveries stun scientists. We've discovered that planets are more ubiquitous and more varied than we ever imagined. And also, that they seem to be easier to find. It's like being a child and discovering a new universe that we hadn't been able to see before. One of the most amazing discoveries to me, really from the data from the NASA Kepler mission, has been that the most common kind of planet in the galaxy is a planet that's about twice the size of the Earth, which is amazing, because there's no planet like that in the solar system. In fact, planets are so common, Drake's number, the fraction of stars that have planets, has the extraordinary value of essentially one. Virtually every star has them. That means a staggering 100 billion trillion planets in the visible universe. 